Hey guys, uh, my name is Josh Smith here with Montana Knife Company and we're here today to talk to you about knife safety for children. This is actually something that I've, I've always done with my kids, uh, is always allowed them to, to use knives, uh, to shoot guns, to do things that actually require a high level of responsibility. Um, but I've always done it from a young age with my children, and it's always worked out really well, well for me. And it's a bit of a philosophy that some people may or may not agree with, but I personally feel like it's important to expose children to the use of knives or shooting guns, stuff like that, at a very, very early age when they're easily impressionable. And I also think a lot of people don't give kids enough credit for how responsible they can actually be. I think children need to be given responsibility, obviously in a controlled way, uh, not just left to, uh, to their own accord. Um, but I think children actually appreciate getting to do things that a lot of their friends really aren't allowed to do. So in the regards to knife safety, uh, I started my children off very, very young. And they really started off mostly in the kitchen uh, in a very controlled setting. So, for example, one of the things that I always tell people to do with their children is to start with a small knife, say in the kitchen, like a paring knife, uh, something like that. You know, honestly, even just setting the table uh, with steak knives of how to carry a knife, um, how to handle a knife. You know, a, a kid's not going to probably hurt themselves too bad with a steak knife. They're generally not razor sharp. Uh, they're not a big knife. So learning how to carry a knife with the edge away from them, with the tip away from them. I always told my children to carry their knife as they were walking around, if they are, with the point down. Uh, so they're not walking around, they don't turn around and run into somebody, uh, maybe one of their siblings or a parent. Uh, they turn around and poke somebody with that situational awareness. So edge down at their side, the edge away, or the tip down and the edge away from their body. As far as using the knife, the best case scenario that we set up was in the kitchen. Uh, they're set up where they're not moving. They're stationary. They're working at a level like this where everything's right in front of them. And we teach them that the tip always stays on the counter. It always stays on the cutting board. And so that way uh, you can set up tasks for them where they rock the knife to cut something. They're not picking it up and trying to chop or do different things because they just don't have sometimes the, 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 uh, the bodily control, the function, uh, so they may miss their mark if they're picking that edge up off of the cutting board. So tip down and rock. And then with this hand away from whatever they're cutting, they're pushing that material in and they're rocking very slowly. I encourage them to do it slowly. We're not in a hurry. When the piece they're cutting gets small, we finish that for them until they get older and they start learning uh, to have a little bit more control over that knife. Then we progress on to actually taking the tip off of the board and go ahead and work on actually cutting things and taking the tip on and off the knife or off the board. Um, and there again, keeping their hand away. At no point, much like gun safety, you have to be careful about where you're, you're uh, pointing your muzzle, right? You don't point your muzzle at anything you don't intend to destroy. Uh, same thing with an edge. Your, your edge should never cross any body, body part, uh, any finger or hand, arm. Uh, you don't reach across and grab this with your knife blade here, right? So everything is kept separate. This compartment and this compartment never cross into each other's compartments. Um, I think that's very easy for children to understand. If you even draw a line on your cutting board, uh, lay something out on your cutting board and say your left hand does not cross that line and your right hand with the knife does not cross that line. And we keep things very segmented uh, and that's a very good approach. Uh, with children, another important thing is to, is to learn how to hand a knife to somebody uh, where we turn that blade around backwards, where don't hand that point to somebody like this or the edge at them. We turn that knife around backwards, we very carefully grab the back of the handle, and then we hand somebody the knife this direction where the edge is away from their own wrist and their own arm, the tip is away from the person receiving it, and you also leave plenty of room for that person to be able to grab it 
if we have the knife like this and we don't have the paracord, there's nothing there to grab and somebody wants to come up here and grab like this. So those are a few important things. Uh, the other things with actually getting a knife and using it in the field, this is where it becomes more dangerous and less controlled, right? We don't have a cutting board to work on. Oh, we start working on things that maybe are weird angles. And so even my children with, with gutting or skinning out deer, uh, generally try to set them up with a lot of success where they're holding the hide maybe of a deer, they're pulling away, and they're using that blade a long ways from their fingers. I don't ask them to do caping detail or, or detail around a joint. And it's, it's important that you set your kids up to do things that are easy to do where it's not a lot of pressure applied. Things that are hard to cut in the kitchen, uh, you know, say like, a, like an almond or a, or a walnut, something that's hard that can rock, that's an uneven surface, um, can roll, that's difficult. It's easier with, you know, lettuce or tomatoes or celery or something like that uh, that tends to not go anywhere that they can dice up. Uh, things that are very hard and you got to get a lot of pressure and push through, that's where we can slip off of what we're cutting and get into our hand for a, for a kid. But again, I do think it's important that you start kids out really young because an older kid is going to want to do everything and they're going to think they can do everything and they're going to be more apt to not necessarily listen to you where a young kid is just super happy to take this knife and just do one little task. And they learn that control over and over. In the field, here again, we don't cut material towards ourselves, and this is for adults as well. Uh, you know, it's really critical when you're in the field and you're miles away from a, from a vehicle, uh, many, many miles away from a hospital for sure and a lot of time, uh, even us as hunters, we gotta be very careful about reaching over something and we're cutting and we, we come through that material and we cut up into our arm, uh, same thing into our leg, you know, drawing back into ourselves and we slip through and we jab ourselves. Um, those are just basic techniques, but for sure with a kid, uh, make sure that they're doing everything in a way that, that is very easy to control. I will argue that a very sharp knife is actually safer for a kid to use because it's easier for them to make nice cuts and go slow than a really dull knife where they're putting a lot of pressure and the next thing you know, they slip off and they jab themselves. So uh, that's some basic knife safety for children. Uh, the last thing that I would say is how to remove a knife or put a knife back in a sheath. There again, we go slow, we index that tip, and this edge is completely away from my hand right here. So I index the spine on that sheath, then I rock that blade into the sheath, and now I can carefully push it up into the sheath. Now our sheaths are tight, so it might be something where an adult might say, hey, I'm gonna go ahead and finish this last little bit, but once it gets to this point, this knife's pretty safe, but we don't want that hand to slip and come off there before this knife is actually in the sheath. For removing the, the, the sheath from uh, a knife, I would ask you that this is something that I don't think you should let a young child do. It does involve some strength and some hand grip and some bodily control. So once that kid reaches you know, 10, 12, 13 years old, then that kid needs to be told, they grab that clip of our, of our sheath right up in here. We don't grab down here by the handle with our finger. And then I tell them, edge away. If this is the edge of the blade, edge away from our body, out away from our body, and we pull and extend. Now we have to be aware of our situational awareness around us as well. Uh, you know, we gotta kind of like crossing the street, look left and right, okay? Now pull and extend. The reason I say extend is I actually wanna overemphasize pulling that knife out because I don't want somebody to be scared when it comes out and jab back into their hand. I've seen that happen with several adults. Uh, they pull and they think they're gonna like hit somebody because they didn't look. And so they react and they do this or they do this and they actually jab themselves. So uh, that's basic safety. It, you know, if a knife is going into like a leather sheath and it's not going well, pull it back out and try again. The tips on our knives and a lot of other knives are sharp, and if you get a bit of an angle going in, it can catch the leather sheath and start to angle through that leather sheath. And these are very sharp. They absolutely will pierce through the side of a sheath if you don't have that blade going on straight. And you're holding the sheath, that's gonna go through that sheath and into your hand. Uh, the last thing I'd say is talk to your kids about what to do in the event that they cut themselves. 
Uh, where is your first aid kit? Uh, where are the band-aids? Do they know how to call 911? Uh, is there a neighbor across the street they can run to their house? Um, making sure they know how to just apply pressure. If they cut their hand or their arm, maybe they can grab a dish towel, apply pressure, and call 911, find a parent, go out in the yard, find your parent if they're outside, or, or go find a neighbor. Um, but just make sure the kids know those basic things so they know to kind of keep, um, you know, keep calm in that situation and deal with it. And make sure they understand that if they cut themselves, they're not going to be in trouble. Uh, you don't want them to hide a cut or, or be afraid to call 911 or be afraid to call the neighbor. It's most important that they get the care they need um, get fixed up. They learn their lesson. We've all cut ourselves. Uh, we're going to cut ourselves even more as adults. So I think children generally are the safest users of knives because they're actually, they have a healthy respect and, and slash fear of the blade. So it's a knife safety for children. I encourage you to please actually get your children in the kitchen, get them in the field and, and let them use blades. Um, it's a great lifelong skill.